Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a 2020 NFL redraft. And it's going to be a ton of fun, but what's crack lacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo, just in case you do not know. So go ahead, become bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that nice, beautiful football uh, This, of course. Shout out to Underdog Fantasy. Thank you for the sponsor of the video. We'll talk about them a little bit later. But I am doing this based on the draft order going into the draft. Any trades done during the draft? I ain't about that. I ain't about that. Because those teams specifically traded up for players who happen to be on the board. I don't think that's fair. I'll take the draft order going in. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and take Joe Burrow to the freaking Cincinnati Bengals. It happened to be the right pick. What can I say? Why change history that much? Like, this dude led you to the Super Bowl. Should have won it. But you did. Uh, and he's going to be keeping you all competitive for the for the future straight up franchise quarterback you gotta love it now this is where things do get a little interesting because i think the quarterbacks in this class are pretty darn good and i think washington probably should have taken a quarterback here uh they current they had currently on the roster Dwayne haskins and kyle allen so it made it would make sense to take advantage of this really good quarterback class and I'm going to take Jalen Hurts. Oh, my goodness, the curveball. Look, listen, Jalen Hurts was really good last year. Really, really good. I'm excited to see what he does in year two of being a full-time starter. I believe it would be year two as a full-time starter. So, yeah, I think I think Hurts deserves it at this point. Uh, you can make an argument about Herbert over him. But I think I might take the guy that could maybe make plays with his feet he just gives you that little bit more the detroit lions so matthew safford is in fact still here he's still here so i'd be trying to improve i'd be just trying to improve the situation uh situation around him currently the best receiver on their team is kenny galladay who ends up being a free agent after the season, and then his career takes a turn. It takes a turn into nowhere. That's <laughs> what happens. But uh, I'm actually going to go with Justin Jefferson, man. Uh, freaking fantastic. I, I don't know what more to say about Justin Jefferson. I think he's what number? He's first or second in... Uh, receiving yards and receptions at like at like prior to the age of 25 it's just nuts man it's just nuts new york giants sorry they already have daniel jones put in place here uh i thought i think going offense tackle was the correct pick with andrew thomas and as good as andrew andrew thomas is i think tristan Wirfs just kind of edges them out here so i'm gonna go with him to the Giants. And then I got my Miami Dolphins, baby. Fins up. Listen, we got two more picks coming up here uh, with the Dolphins. And I don't think Tua's a bad choice here. I really don't. But if you're going to go quarterback, I think you kind of got to go Herbert. He's just simply currently the better and the healthier option. So we're going to go ahead and take Justin Herbert. Which basically means with the Chargers, we gotta take Tua Tango below. Kinda have to. Like Tua's been like he was spectacular at portions last season. He really was. They currently have Tyrod Taylor there uh in, with the Chargers. So if you don't want to start Tua too early, you really don't have to. Just, you know, don't put a hole in Tyrod Taylor's lung. Looking at you, Chargers. And honestly, the line significantly gets better in a year. So we're going to take Tua here. Then we got the Carolina Panthers. So I was looking at their roster and Russell Okun actually retires after the 2020 season where he actually only ends up only making seven starts because of injury. And I think he ended up making like a lot of money because he asked for all his salary to be all in cryptocurrency. So it ended up just like being a whole lot whole lot by the time uh it came to pay the pipers so kind of wild but i'm gonna go with andrew thomas he's been that good andrew thomas is a top top 10 
top five tackle in the league. Okay, Arizona Cardinals. And kind of tough. You kind of want to build around Murray, though the defense isn't all that right now. Like, it's all right, but still want to build around uh, Kyler Murray. So I think I'm going to actually snag Russell, not Russell, uh, Michael Onwenu. Someone who's shown he's capable of playing either tackle and guard. More importantly, he kind of fits the 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 height threshold for Kyler Murray at a six three. So might be a bit surprising here at eight, but straight up, he has been that good at whatever they ask him to do, whether with the Patriots, whether it's guard or tackle. Okay, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars on the clock. Uh, they don't have. Tr they do it. Wait. Do they have Trevor Lawrence? No, Trevor Lawrence is 2021. Okay, so currently it's Uncle Rico, and I was screaming, give Uncle Rico a chance. I want freaking Minshew Mania, baby. So let's give him a chance. Let's grab him some playmakers, and we're going to snag CD Lamb to pair up with uh, who's there currently. We got, I think it's C DJ Chark. Yeah, I think it's DJ Chark. So, grabbing more playmakers for the Jags. Okay, we got the Cleveland Browns, and I kind of, I kind of think they made the right decision here. I was like looking at other avenues I could go, but Jedrick Wills has been very solid for the Browns. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna do anything different there. I know a little less exciting, but it is what it is. However, this kind of made the the pick difficult for the Jets because I was like, oh, crap, there's really no tackle here. I'm not going to take another shot here with Makai Becton. There really isn't a tackle prospect I'd want to take. So if we're really going to listen, if, you, if you're going to if you want to get a fair evaluation of Sam Darnold, OK, maybe grab him playmakers because I was stuck between do I take the first corner because the corners are pretty darn good in this class or do I just go with playmaker? And I think I'm going with playmaker and. This might shock some people. I'm going with T. Higgins. Get him that big bodied baby. That's right. There's a lot of good receivers. That's the thing. In this class, there's good corners and good receivers. So we're probably going to see those guys kind of kind of come off the board uh pretty darn fast. I mean, what we've already had we've already had uh three receivers off the board. We'll see the corners eventually. We'll see the corners eventually. As in, uh, we'll see them right freaking now and i'm actually gonna take aj terrell for the las vegas Raiders. like i think it's pretty close like terrell has just had the more the hot the better season between like guys like Diggs and johnson i don't know if people are like gonna be like Diggs, pass prescription interceptions like guys he gives up a lot of yards like last year he i felt like was kind of the best season he had he started like for me it was like okay he's not not really giving up a lot of these big plays, not at least at the rate he was the year prior. But uh, Terrell, I know last year wasn't quite ideal for him, but the year prior, man, it was just borderline elite. I think he can get back to that level. Jalen Johnson, I feel like, is more of a very solid, like a high-end number two corner. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go with Terrell here. Uh, the Take the first. I think that's the first defensive player, right? Yeah, because his edge class ends up with a lot of question marks. Yeah, I think that's the first defensive player. So there we go. There we go. All right, we on to the San Francisco 49ers. And I had to think, I was like, listen, they're not gonna they're not gonna get Brandon Ayuk at 31. It's not gonna happen. He's su he's been such a great pick. I feel like he's very underrated. Uh, he's not going to be, a, again, not going to be available. I'm going to be end up taking him much higher than this if he falls. So if you want Ayuk, 49ers fans, in a redraft, you're probably going to have to take him here. So that's what I'm going to do. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So kind of sucked that no tackles here. Is what it is. Got to make the best of it. Uh, I was looking at the roster. And... They ha they really needed to get a running buddy with Shaq Barrett, and I thought I, I was looking. I was like, okay, so I guess this is Chase Young. That's kind of the obvious answer because you look at the rest of the edge class, and it's like, oh, 
man, a lot of these guys have not turned out too well. But then I got to the name, and I was like, you know what, dude? He is one of the mo one of the more fierce edge rusher, like second, like edge rusher twos, I guess you would say, in the league at this point. He has the most pressures in this class as of right now. I think I'm going to take Alex Highsmith. He's actually a really good fit for the scheme with Bulls. I'm taking him. I'm taking him. But Chase Young, I mean, the upside with Chase Young, it's a lot. You, you got to hope he's going to rekindle some of that magic from earlier in his rookie contract. So, like, I imagine he's going to come off the board fairly soon. Um, not with this pick here. I think with the Broncos, they currently got Ed Donatel as the DC and I really do think uh because the corners are actually again there's some solid corners here I think Trevon Diggs would actually be a really good fit for that scheme so I'm gonna snag him here for the Broncos and I think this is where I take Chase Young I think this is where because the, the the pass rush is just so bad there in Atlanta I think you got to swing on the tools of Chase Young and knowing that he's been slowed by injury the last few season so we're gonna take him here so kind of sucks for the cowboys right you're like looking at this be like wow you don't get digs you don't get lamb but i still think they come out with a really good slot receiver at this picker a guy that could even flex outside a little bit at jerry judy like jerry judy's had some solid season the last couple of years like it just hasn't he hasn't had that like true breakout thousand yard year you know so i think you could do that with jerry judy in dallas all right dolphins are here on the clock, we grabbed Justin Herbert. I would love to get some offensive line help. Fun fact, the offensive line class, not entirely great. Even the interior, it's like, do I want to take like Robert Hunt here? Do I want to take uh, Cushionberry? Um, like what other guys? I guess not a lot. So it's like, do I want to take those guys here? Probably not. Probably not right now. Uh, I guess you could also talk about uh, who is it? Where is it? Where is it? we got Ezra Cleveland, right? Ezra Cleveland. So like, uh, that's too rich. I want to get a very good player and it, like just really good player, really good value at this point at this juncture. Uh, and I, I went to the safety class and I was like, oh a few guys here and i was like oh freaking antoine winfield man this dude's been phenomenal he's just better than the rest in this class so we're gonna snag him for the future and we'll see what we can do with the third first round pick that the dolphins have okay we got aj terrell there for the las vegas raiders and i was looking at their weapons they didn't have too many weapons for Derek carr they had hunter renfro and then zay jones that's it so i was like you know what there's still this receiving class is still pretty good we're just gonna gotta avoid henry rook sorry that's just the truth but we're gonna grab michael Pittman, man he's one of the best jump ball guys in the i would say in the league like coming to the draft he certainly was as well so we're gonna snag him here so bam you got you got some more weapons for Derek carr now, the Jaguars. We had, we grabbed stinking CD Lamb. So what do we do with this next pick? And I was looking, and this is kind of the beginning of where the secondary starts to crumble for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So I think grabbing young talent should be a priority. And I think I probably said this a little earlier. People kind of forget how good uh, where you at? Jalen Johnson really is. So we're going to snag him here, and I feel really good about the Jags coming out with CeeDee Lamb and Jalen Johnson in this draft. All right, the Philadelphia Eagles. You don't get Jalen Hurts. It kind of sucks. And this is where things are going to get freaking hot. This is this is going to be – this is going to – this is this – is, I think this is going to be the pick that sets people off in the comment section. I really do. So let, let, let's do it. Let's see how it goes. All right, so – the Eagles in this draft, they got their quarterback of the future. In this draft, they were able to develop him for a couple of years, and he's just, he emerged. Got that extension. Like, Hertz has just been wonderful. Maybe you still, there, there's a guy where the jury is still out, and he's actually going to get his first season where he is the undisputed starter. 
I think Jordan Love actually makes sense here. Because there wasn't a lot of needs on the Eagles roster. And if you want to take a shot on Jordan Love, I think that's the pick. I really do. All right. <laughs> Can't wait to see the comment section. On to the Minnesota Vikings. And again, looking at this roster, Noah and I have also picked 25 coming up. And it would be nice. Like, kind of like, I feel like the receiving class kind of drops. At this point, it drops off. We just took too many. So it's like, I want to go back to maybe the corner position because their secondary, their cornerback position is just not good. And let's see if we can actually find this cat. There he is. Legereus Sneed ends up being just stupid good for the, uh, the Chiefs. He can play outside. He can play in the slot. So I'm going to snag him here, and then we'll see what we can do. Maybe a receiver at pick 25. The New England Apatriots. Man. So this team, it will, I would love to get a quarterback. I would have taken Jordan Love at this pick. Because this team went in with Stidham and Hoyer as their starting quarterbacks. So it's unfortunately that Love apparently didn't make it here. Kind of wild. Uh, but listen, the offensive line is really good for the New England Patriots. So you can maybe kind of mask and protect your quarterback with the run game. And I'm going to take Jonathan Taylor here for the Patriots. Jonathan Taylor, arguably, uh, it's not even, ar you can't argue. He's a top 10 back in the NFL. It's arguable that he might be a top five. I think he, he, he's in that top five. Unfortunately, last year, a lot of things working against him last season on top of injury. But, man, him with the Patriots would just be freaking nuts. Okay, this is the Saints. Uh, the Saints defense just was was super good here, and this is something I noticed. Like, I was like, man, Derek Brown still on the board, and I really had no idea where to put him. I really didn't. It was mighty freaking tough, and it was like the defense was just too good for the Saints. And I was like, nah, I'm kind of looking for, I guess, offensive line here at this juncture. And the, their guard position just isn't good. And Robert Hunt is. So, like, I was between Robert Hunt and Ezra Cleveland. And I'm going to lean with Hunt. I think Hunt's actually a, may, might be a better fit um, opposed to Cleveland. But to be fair, we've seen Hunt in a variety of different schemes. So, a little bit unfair. But if I'm going to project a guy to a scheme, I'd rather a guy that I've already seen. Opposed to Cleveland, who's mainly been in this like outside zone, wide outside zone blocking scheme for a majority of his career. So it really sucks that we don't have Justin Jefferson. It really does. But there are some receivers that I think we could probably think of here. Not Denzel Mims. Unfortunately, the guy really never been given the opportunity to have big volume. LaVisca Chanel. Ah. Uh, I'm actually going to go with, where yet? How far down is he here? Darnell Mooney. Listen, he's such an explosive weapon. If we're going to, listen, he's an upgrade, but it's just, or he's a downgrade from just Jefferson, but that's just because just Jefferson's like a top three wide receiver. Darnell Mooney, he still gives you that explosiveness, man. He really does. So we're going to snag him here for the Minnesota Vikings and... I still feel like that's solid first round for the Vikings. It's just unfortunate knowing what you actually got in Justin Jefferson. But that's how the cookie crumbles. Miami Dolphins. And this is where things get a little bit hairy. Because I was like, maybe Derek Brown. But it's like, dude, that interior for the Dolphins is just so good. It's already good. I don't want to invest there. I was looking at maybe different areas that I could. And I was like, this is their third first round pick. Let's why why not just roll the dice on upside? Especially since they really had no receivers at this time. So I'm willing to roll the dice on Chase Claypool at his size, testing out like he did. Why not? Why not? So I'm gonna take him there for the Dolphins. Uh, Seattle Seahawks. 
Uh, this is where the, the Derek Brown slide ends. It's crazy that it makes it here in 27, but hey, that'd be the draft. There are a lot of good playmakers uh, in this draft, and just a lot of teams that already were pretty pretty solid enough on the defensive interior. So it makes it here to the Browns. Uh, it's just great value, and they get a very solid piece on the defensive interior. The Baltimore uh, Ravens. So this is where they took Patrick Queen, and I think the pick's still going to be linebacker, but I'm going to go with uh, a linebacker who's been a hell of a lot more consistent in Logan Wilson. He has really developed into a very nice player for the Cincinnati uh, Bengals, and now he goes to uh, the Rifles in the Baltimore Ravens. Tennessee Titans. This suck there's not a lot of like there's not studs available here there there just isn't there's players that i'm looking at as like do i just risk the upside on or do i go with someone who i think's just been a bit more solid and i think we actually could address both those i think we can get someone who's been pretty darn solid but who has a lot of upside that really just hasn't uh broken out or at least achieved that upside so I'm going to take Jeremy Chin here. Ridiculous athlete that's kind of played all over the place for the Carolina Panthers. But I don't think he's really... Uh, I wouldn't call him an elite player. I think he's a, someone who is very good at this point. Just has it like... they were. I think it's... I think it, honestly it's because they haven't really settled on one position for him. But I, I think if you have them working out of the slot or even maybe a split high system, then that, that would work real well for him. But regardless, we're taking him here in Tennessee. We're going to take a shot on someone like that. Green Bay Packers. Uh, I think you just give Aaron Rodgers a weapon. You pair Devontae Adams up with someone who can be a mean field stretcher. So I know he runs a bit hot and cold. But I'm going to go ahead with Gabriel Davis, Gabe Davis here. All right. We got the San Francisco 49ers. Currently, they have uh, Tom Compton uh, at right guard. So I think this is actually a good fit for Ezra Cleveland, someone who's produced pretty, pretty darn well in a wide zone blocking scheme. Go ahead, take them here for the Niners, and I think that's a pretty solid first uh, first round for the Niners. With the considering you have two picks. Oh man, this one was tough for the Kansas City Chiefs. I played with a variety of different options, and ultimately, I think I ended up just settling on like I really thought about Isaiah Simmons. I really did. Especially considering, um, did they? Is it Willie Gay in this draft? Yeah. Especially considering what what they've worked with with Willie Gay, but Willie Gay got a little, I think, a little bit more girth to him. Uh, I'm actually gonna swing for the fences. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Jeffrey Akuda, who actually fits the system as a press man corner there in Spag system. Like, listen, if he just kind of like does nothing in Atlanta this next season, we won't see Jeffrey Okuda in another first round redraft. We won't, but we will in this video. We're going to take him here to wrap up the first round, but it's kind of wild how this, uh, this draft class, it's like, Oh, there's so many good players. And it does kind of fall off a cliff at a point where it's like, I do. I just get a solid player. Do I get someone with some, maybe some upside, a better positional value. So you could kind of tell, but, like, man, the, the tippy top of this draft class, really darn good. But that's it for the video. Go ahead, do the YouTube thing. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.